Hello everyone. Today, my colleague Jun Nakajima and myself, Ravi Sahita, will talk to you about the architectural extensions that we are working on to advance confidential computing for public cloud environments. Specifically, we'll talk about Intel TDX or Intel Trust Domain extensions. So we'll cover the following items. We'll cover the cloud threat vectors we're trying to address with Intel TDX. We'll look at uh, quickly an evolution of the cloud workload isolation. Then we'll dive into Intel TDX. We'll try to cover the, the key architectural building blocks, the threat model and coverage. And finally, Jun Nakajima will cover the software implications of Intel TDX. Let's look at the cloud threat vectors quickly. The first area we're trying to address are for cloud tenants that are worried about exploits that may lead to loss of their data. At the same time, providers are worried about privilege escalation that may lead to loss of control of the infrastructure. The second key tenant we are trying to address is cloud providers where they want to address the fact that, you know, they don't want the visibility into the customer workloads. They want to make sure that the data that's in use is always encrypted and addresses the key privacy and security requirements. And then the third is that we're trying to address in terms of the usage models is to be able to support isolation models and confidentiality models that go across applications to virtual machines and eventually also to containers and microservices. Let's look at how the cloud workload isolation has evolved. So today we already have Intel virtualization technology, which is used by virtual machine monitors to isolate hardware virtual machines today and Intel TXT or Trusted Execution Technology, which can be used to measure the VMM on launch so that it can be, um, you know, reported, its measurements can be reported. We also have the capabilities of total memory encryption um, and, and multi-key total memory encryption that can be used to encrypt either all of physical memory on the system or under the VMM's control, selected uh, uh, memory on the, on the system at a page granular level. And that can be enabled either uh, just basically through the BIOS through for the total memory encryption or additionally through the VMM for multi-key total memory encryption. In both of these cases, however, the VMM remains in the trusted computing base or TCB for both the cloud providers and the cloud tenants. Let's look uh, forward at, as, at what other options uh, or capabilities Intel has provided for removing the VMM from the TCB. So first we have Intel Software Guard extensions or SGX, which removes the OS VMM from the TCB. It requires enabling of the application or some library OS um, along with the OS and the VMM. Today we are introducing Trust Domain extensions or Intel TDX, which essentially operates at the, at the VMX root level and can be used to remove the CSP provided software and the VMM from the TCB while isolating the VM as the, as the container boundary. And we call such an isolated VM that's isolated through Intel TDX, a trust domain or a TD. The important aspect of Intel TDX is that with the right enabling done for the VMM and the operating systems, the, the goal is to not require any changes to the applications to be able to protect them in a confidential manner. So let's start diving into the Intel TDX architecture uh, with, with some key goals or, or, or scope. The first is to provide confidentiality, access control, and integrity protection for VMs that run as TDs or trust domains in an, in, on an environment that for which a VMM has been enabled. We want to maintain the resource management role of the VMM, and that also means ensuring that neither VMs or legacy VMs or new TDs um, cannot launch a, a privilege escalation attack on the on the platform. Some attacks though are out of scope. Since the VMM retains the resource management role on the platform, any VMM induced denial of service is out of scope. And also some hardware adversary attacks such as memory replay are out of scope. Let's start diving into the building blocks for Intel TDX. We'll start with the CPU ISA. The first key capability is a CPU mode of operation called Secure Arbitration Mode, which is used to host a Intel TDX module. The Intel TDX module is software that runs using this CPU um, SIEM mode of operation and is protected through capabilities that the CPU provides. 
including a specific set of instructions that are used to enable guest host interactions. The DDX module uses CPU, this CPU mode to host the security functions that are exposed to the VMM. And in order to protect the TDX module, this mode restricts the use of certain ISR so the TDX module can, can use those, uh, those instructions. It also provides range registers to protect the TDX module from other host software on the platform. The TDX module is loaded into this range register protected region through an Intel authenticated code module, also called a seam loader. Further, the TDX module is also protected for against physical attacks for using the total memory encryption engine to ensure the confidentiality and, and more importantly, the integrity of the contents of the TDX module while it is executing. So let's look at how the secure arbitration mode interacts with the with the legacy state machine. So what I'm showing here is sort of the, the traditional VMX um, operation, right? Where the CPU essentially through VM exit and VM enter transitions between VMX root mode and non-root mode of operation. Where the secure arbitration mode comes in is as shown on the right hand side, where software can enter the seam VMX root mode of operation through a seam call and can exit seam VMX root mode of operation and come out into ordinary legacy VMX root through seam red. VM exit and VM enters work almost similarly uh, as ordinary VM exit and VM enters in uh, the seam mode of operation with some subtle differences that during the CPU being in the seam VMX root mode of operation, interrupts like SMIs are kept pending and they may be taken when the CPU is in seam VMX non-root mode of operation and are inhibited until the seam returns to the legacy VMX root mode of operation where they are uh, unpended. This picture on the left-hand side shows that interaction, that most of the interactions with uh, uh, opt-out um, SMM, legacy SMM operation, or opt-in STM operation remain, remain unmodified with uh, the introduction of SIEM mode. So with those three key capabilities defined, the Intel TDX module, the ACMs used to load the, 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 the SIEM loader ACM used to load the TDX module, and obviously the CPU hardware, the fourth key capability that uh, sits in the trusted computing base for TDs is the is a coding enclave. And as I'll describe in a later file, we leverage the coding and attestation infrastructure that Intel SGX offers to make it simpler for uh, for you know folks using Intel TDX to leverage the same attestation infrastructure as Intel SGX. As this picture shows. All of the other remaining capabilities on the platform, including devices, all other host software, platform firmware, BIOS, SMM, the host OS, and the VMM, etc., are all not trusted by the TDN outside the TCB for Intel TDX. So let's dive into the next building block, which is memory confidentiality. So I'm showing a simple picture here of, uh, uh, of an SOC with, with memory exposed. Um, and the MKTME or the multi-key total memory encryption engine is, is used as a building block for Intel TDX. And that's programmed through an instruction called pconfig to program the, the key IDs in the memory controller uh, and the MKTME engine. The, for Intel TDX, what we do here is that the key ID space that, that is used to program the, um, the MKTME engine is effectively partitioned into a TD private and a shared key ID space. This allows the VMM to select what key IDs to use for TDs and what key IDs to retain for legacy VMs. And this partition is configured at system BIOS time, uh, system initialization time through BIOS, and is verified and locked down by Intel and check. The key important mechanism here, as I was referring to in the previous slide, is some ISA is restricted in some operations for the Intel TDX module through the C mode of the CPU. And pconfig is one specific example. The partitioning of the, the key ID namespace is enforced to allow the TDX module to be able to use pconfig to program the keys for TDs, while the VMM can assign key IDs as shown in this picture, but cannot actually access 
uh, or program those keys through pconfig. Um, a related point also is that the VMM may optionally retain some key IDs for legacy VMs, and that's you know that's really an, an opt-in capability for the for the VMware. Let's look at the next building block, which is uh, memory integrity. And as, sh as shown by various researchers, it is not sufficient to just provide confidentiality through encryption for for uh, um, for uh, the correct operation of the TDs. It is also important to provide some level of tamper resistance against uh, against attacks that untrusted software may perform. So um, that is enabled through the through memory integrity capability in the MKTME engine, and that is as I said to protect against various forms of uh, 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 memory modification, tamper, relocation, splicing, and cross TD corruption. Memory integrity is enabled in the MKTME engine through a SHA3 based MAC. It is used in a in a in a truncated fashion with 28 bits of the of the integrity. Uh, Mac being retained, um, and that is uh, managed through the DDR5 metadata. Further, the the metadata also contains a TD owner bit, which ensures that the untrusted software does not have any access to the to ciphertext even when a memory when memory is in under use by a TD. And any attempt from untrusted software to read memory that belongs to a TD will essentially return zero data. And depending on the, the the type of access performed, may also poison the cache line. At the same time, we also want to protect the the platform from TD. So the VMM can ensure through the through the TDX module that any memory used by the TD is correctly initialized first using direct stores, uh, and and this protects the VMM. Further, any as I said in the previous point, any untrusted software or hardware writes to the to the memory. Corrupts the Mac and therefore protects the TD. So we achieve this sort of uh, dual goal of protecting both the VMM and the and the TD. Next, let's look at how the private keys are managed both by the TDX module and the CPU as a TD is operating. So if you recall, I had described in a previous file that the key ID space is partitioned between private key IDs and shared key ID space. The private key ID space are managed by the TDX module and it tracks their allocation to ensure that the VMM um, does not misuse uh, a key ID that has been assigned to a particular TD. And that key ID is loaded by the CPU during VM entry as the virtual CPUs for the TD TDs are executing on a logical processor. The TD expresses its, uh, its goals of uh, what data is accessed as private and what data is accessed as shared through a new architectural convention that is expressed through the IA paging structures managed by the TD through the bit 51 or 47, depending on the, the physical address available on the system and is expressed through a control bit called the shared bit. And the shared bit, if cleared, specifies that the TD wishes to access private data through those, through those guest physical addresses and for that, the CPU automatically uses the, the private key ID assigned by the, by the VMM and tracked by the TDX module. If the shared bit is set, however, the CPU will use the VMM specified uh, T MKTME key ID to access any shared data. And that example usages of that may be power virtualized IO data. Now, while this convention is in place, it's also important to enforce that a malicious VMM cannot um, modify the address translation structures uh, or specifically the extended page table second level address translation structures such that uh, the TD may access incorrect data. And the Intel TDX module and the CPU both work in conjunction to mitigate this, uh, this attack, uh, specifically when TD private uh, GPAs are being translated. So TD VMs, unlike a legacy VM, have a second EPTP or extended page table pointer called a secure EPTP and that references a secure extended page table that will be used by the CPU when the TD is accessing my private memory. So private GPAs always get walked through the secure extended page tables whereas shared GPAs expressed through the shared bit being one the GPA get translated through the shared EPT structure and that 
both of these walks are are same as legacy walks however the security properties are enforced by the tdx module on the secure extended page table and the cpu further also enforces through appropriate tags in the tlb that any translations combined translations that are cached through the secure pt are tagged as being derived from the secure pt in the same non node mode of operation an important point to note here that whenever the cpu um, is enforcing address translation for tds it enforces that code fetches from the td or any address translation always occurs in td private memory and if that's not the case then the cpu throws a fault now let's look at the next building block of uh, physical memory management or specifically guest physical management and how the tdx module enforces that memory assigned to a td is uh, is tracked appropriately so all the physical memory that a vmm may assign to a td is tracked by the tdx module through a data structure called a pamt or physical address metadata table and this structure is through which the tdx module enforces that uh, a page can be owned by only a particular td and that it's in the right state based on the memory management operation being performed by the vmm this structure is simply a bookkeeping structure and is not walked by the cpu uh, any properties that are bookkeep through this book kept through this uh, structure are enforced through the security pt mappings for the td private memory um, and thereby we ensure that uh, there is no additional latency for uh, a td page walk while while enforcing the security properties the vmm assigns memory for tds dynamically um, and that all comes through the through the vmm uh, and you know uh, managed memory through the through the scene call apis that the tdx module in, you know uh, exposes and the tdx module use of the tdx module apis ensures that the td ephemeral key gets used to ensure the integrity of these apt structures so that they cannot be tampered with while guest private memory has been assigned and mapped through these apt structures um, because the pmt structure maintains information at 1 gigabyte 2 megabyte and 4 kilobyte levels um, the td private memory can be mapped in any of these uh, um, sizes um, also the td private memory may be reallocated uh, or relocated by the vmm um, to support various numa numa optimization strategies the vmm may already be used last but not the least uh, let's talk about the building block for supporting of uh, attestation so um, as is clear for for most confidential computing use cases without a relying party being able to attest that a workload is running inside a td it's kind of pointless to uh, to do any confidential computing so we leverage the same attestation model and infrastructure that we have for intel sgx um, and and the, this flow may be familiar to a lot of you, but I'll just summarize it quickly here. Um, the process starts with a challenger um, requesting a TD to prove its authenticity, to prove that it's running as a valid TD with the expected measurements on an authentic Intel TDX platform. And the TD can add at its own data as shown in step through to, through a TD call, request a local report for um, for uh, its its uh, its uh, state the that that local request into the tdx module is translated by the tdx module into a cmops uh, invocation and the cmops leaf used for this purpose is called seam report and that generates a locally mapped report which contains both the measurement of the tdx module as measurement as measured during and recorded during load time and the measurement of the td that is managed by the tdx module that locally mapped report is then passed back to the TD, which in step six is shared with the with the VMM. Since this Mac is this report is locally mapped, it can be verified on the platform by a quoting enclave and converted into a quote signed with the attestation key. And that quote is then returned to the TD and then made it, may be returned to the to the challenger, which can share it with uh, with a relying party that can validate that the quote is coming from a valid Intel TDX platform with an expected Intel TDX module version and the measurement of the TD that it expects. The relying party can then proceed to, to uh, provision any, any secrets, etc. Onto the, onto the TD and uh, allow the workload to proceed. 
So with that uh, understanding of the base building block for T Intel TDX, let's start looking through the, the threat coverage based on the, the threat model we presented earlier. For these different scenarios, we'll walk through the software adversary attacks, the hardware adversary attacks, and so on. And in each of these cases, we will note uh, what we consider the, the attacking entities to be. For the software adversary attacks, we consider the any of the CSP software, which includes the VMM, any other colluding TDs on the platform, the system operator, etc., to be in the, uh, in the scope of the attackers. And the first attack class we look at is where software attempts direct access to the TD private memory, whether to read the contents um, or to access the ciphertext or to inject content into it. And that's mitigated through both a combination of the access control properties of the TD100 bit and also additionally the, the ephemeral uh, key-based memory encryption and integrity. The next attack vectors are um, secondary sort of attack vectors, which is through Rohammer or through using system, system address map aliases created by malicious BIOS. And both of those are addressed uh, basically through the memory integrity mechanisms, but also for preventing the uh, uh, malicious aliases through an additional alias check enforcement authentication authenticated code modules from Intel. The next class of software attacks uh, falls into the next these two buckets through um, the address translation attacks through software based uh, EPT remapping and that's addressed through the secure EPT architecture is right as well as any malicious interrupter exception injection by the VMM to essentially cause invalid execution inside the TD and that's mitigated by the TDX module by ensuring that it protects the virtual epic page uh, thereby mitigating any uh, violation of TPR levels or virtual NMI blocking, etc., by the by the VMM, uh, and also protecting, obviously, the TD control structures through that same confidentiality and integrity protected memory. Further, the CPUs also um, enforces disallowing any external interrupts with vectors that are reserved for exceptions. And that's a change over the previous uh, VMX architecture. The next uh, area of threat coverage will cover hardware adversary attacks. And in this case, we add to the attacker set the, the, the ability for the VMM to uh, induce devices to perform these attacks. And we'll first look at the, the you know, sort of uh, DMA attacks coming with, uh, with, with the use of these private key IDs, effectively the VMM using a DMA, DMA from a device, rogue device as a conduit. And the mitigation in the platform is to essentially prevent those DMA access that contain the private key IDs in the host physical addresses. The next set of online hardware attacks are um, the VMM trying to use the devices to either inject uh, data or move the data from, uh, from one uh, location to the other across TDs. And that's mitigated through the uh, ephemeral key-based memory encryption and integrity model. However, any replay of memory, hardware replay of memory that targets the same physical address for a specific TD is not protected against in the current generation. Uh, finally, looking at some of the offline DRAM attack uh, uh, methods, those are basically mitigated by the uh, memory encryption using the TDF ephemeral keys. Let's look at the next class of attack, which is uh, at attacks on the attestation infrastructure or the TDX module itself. For example, by, by rolling back the TDX module to a prior uh, version, which which may be uh, you know um, which may have uh, you know a, a vulnerability. That's mitigated essentially by ensuring that the seam ACM, the seam loader ACM, will prevent such such downgrades because because of uh, verifying verification of the security version number of the Intel TDX module. Further, the relying party that verifies the attestation can also use that mechanism to verify that the uh, the correct TDX module is, is in use by the by the platform. In in the other attack case where a tampered TDX module is loaded by the VMM, um, it's also addressed partially by the, the seam loader um, uh, ACM verifying the integrity of the module at launch time um, and, and recording those measurements uh, through the CPU SVN. Um, but it's also important to ensure the runtime integrity of that module, and that is enforced by the by the CPU. For in terms of software access control using the range register, the seam range register, and also from hardware attacks, um, the, uh, as I described in the previous slide, through the memory integrity mechanisms. 
Last but not the least, we also have to consider, since we are considering uh, uh, system software that's outside the TCP, we also have to consider side channel attacks that may be attempted. Um, and you look at these different classes. The first one is the uh, poisoning of the branch prediction units to to extract uh, you know uh, uh, side channel information through the through the cache, and that is essentially prevented through the mechanisms uh, we have already talked about, such as using IBPB and IBRS uh, or branch predi prediction barrier methods that are enforced by the TDX module during the seam call seam rate transitions. Uh, further, the TDX module also enforces the, the isolation of the spec control MSR for TDs to ensure the, 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 the selected properties through, the, through that MSR are enforced. The next uh, 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 you know, uh, capabilities that can potentially be used as side channels are perform or performance monitoring and debug. Right? Both of these capabilities are optionally available to the, to the TDs that, that choose to turn on perform and debug. And if those capabilities are enabled, um, then the appropriate performance information and debug information is isolated by the TDX module for the for the TD. Uh, further, the information that uh, the fact that the TD has opted in to debug and performance is reported through the through the TD attestation mechanisms, so that it can cannot be maliciously enabled by untrusted software. Uh, the last couple of side channels are EPT fault information that may be extracted as a TD is initializing, uh, as well as uh, you know broad uh, cache-based side channel attacks like Prime Probe, and those are not uh, mitigated in the current generation. So with that, I'll pause here and hand it over to my colleague Jun Nakajima, who will walk through a summary of the architecture building blocks and continue uh, discussing the software touch points for Intel TDX. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ravi. Now we're going to talk about the software effort required to enable TDX. Before jumping to the details, I'd like to recap what Ravi shared so far. If you look at the data structures, shared in the, if you look at data structures here, for example, the CPU state, virtual epic page, or secure extended page table, and then uh, various uh, VM control structures, they are maintained in private memory, which is protected by the CPU and invisible to non-TD system software, including the VMM itself. And if you look at the TD, the memory itself is in the private memory, and hardware uses the access control, such as TD owner bit, and then also per TD private key, to mitigate VMM uh, attacks from uh, modifying, observing the tenant's memory, whether in a cache or in DDR. Okay. Let's take a look at software implications or the software effort or touch point for Intel TDX. First of all, the TD. TD starts from a guest of firmware. We call TDVF, just a TD virtual firmware. It needs to accommodate private shared memory and then also need to enumerate the TD capabilities. And then we simplify the implementation, uh, initialization of the CPU uh, booting. So those changes are required in uh, guest firmware. Also, uh, the TD, the guest OS itself, uh, or kernel, mostly the, uh, the, all are in the kernel areas. It's hash V, it's a virtual exception that Exception handler it will be 
generated by the hardware and then for various cases for example handle instructions that are not supported in the TD and that would be that would generate a HDBE also the OS itself need to explicitly tell uh, about the shared memory by default all memory is the entire memory is she, uh, private memory. Okay. Also, since the private memory cannot be accessed by the host BMM, the TD guest needs to use bounce buffer for data movement. For example, that the VF, uh, sorry, the, the BMM needs to copy the data or read the data to the shared memory first. Then the guest or TD needs to copy from shared to the private memory. Okay. To that end, uh, we need a DMA API changes in the TD. Okay. So there are many touch point in the BMM. The BMM needs to use uh, TDX module interface or API to manage the TD life cycle. For example, assigning key IDs, uh, allocating and, and uh, use setting uh, control structure, and also uh, setting up the secure APT and then modifying uh, secure EPT entries. And then uh, if you look at the bootloader or the platform bootloader BIOS, uh, it needs to enable MKTMI and then uh, partition the key ID space between uh, MKTME and then the TDX and need to load MCheck and the SIM loader. Now take a look at uh, software deployment order. Also the TD memory is encrypted so it's, it's kind of special. Um, we can use TD for uh, existing models without modifying the upper layers like applications. As long as we have TD enlightenment, basically enhancement or modification in support of TDX in the OS. In the OS, especially in the, again, the kernel. Okay. For example, this is a the typical most kind of conventional case basically you have a full operating system and run the operating system within a TD or a container a container in the operating system and then if you have a guest OS with TD enlightenment then you can run that unmodified container uh, inside a TD okay. or even smaller ones and in the future uh, we may be able to support a modified legacy OS and more IO interactions okay. now switching gear to the KVM uh, I will briefly mention the key beam touch point uh, this will give a good uh, you know more specific example of what we need to do so, so starting from a uh, td initialization on the host at the bsp we launch sim loader acm module and then at the boot time uh, configure TDX module on all CPUs okay. and then the KVM core part one thing we need to do is TDX and BMX coexistence that's uh, a bit complex but uh, I think we can achieve that also we need uh, some uh, modification uh, to the BMX 
to support interrupt handling. And like I said before, the TDX requires the BMM to use TDX module API for various uh, operations. So we need to add the code to use TDX module API. And when we're doing so, we want to reuse existing uh, AMD SCB's uh, IO control code as much as possible. Okay. On the MMU side, we need to add shared or the primary memory handling. Also, it's good to MM guest primary memory uh, from uh, the kernel or the user space BMM because uh, if the kernel or user memory user sorry user BMM accidentally modifies the guest memory that can be captured by the integrity detection and that can cause a machine check. We have more on the MMU side on the, so we added the secure EPT and like I said, uh, secure APT itself, the page table will be in uh, private memory and the BMM cannot modify the BMM, uh, the EPT entries directory. And for that kind of case, the, the BMM needs to use the SIM call, SIM API to modify the EPT entries. And also, the it needs to VMM needs to set up the EPT page table to generate the hash BE, especially to support MMIO. And MMIO upon the MMIO, the emulated MMIO in the guest, that will generate hash BE in the guest, and then the guest needs to handle the hash uh, the MMIO from there, okay? And then the private memory um, management. There are various uh, data uh, structure need to be allocated in a private memory and then and the primary memory must reside in a trusted domain memory region, TDMR. We have more details at the KBM forum Friday, tomorrow, and then she'll be presenting uh, TDX enabling for KB, uh, uh, KBM. Okay. Now, switching gears to uh, the guest, Linux guest. Starting from, uh, uh, actually, guest BIOS. Guest BIOS is not the part of uh, Linux, but uh, that, that you know, we need to add the TD support to the guest formula or TDVF, right? And the sub the changes required there will be basically a subset of uh, changes uh, required for the TD Linux uh, below. But one important role of the guest BIOS is a measurement and an attestation of the Linux or the guest itself. Okay. I don't cover that the measurement and the attestation in here, the details, but uh, I'll basically talk about the Linux, switch to the Linux. And the Linux side, we simplify the booting and the initial in its state is different in a TD, so we need a modification to support that thing. And then also, TD can get a TD execution environment from TDX module. So the T, uh, Linux needs to have some changes to accommodate such modifications. More importantly, the Linux needs some uh, TD specific uh, modifications. We call TDX uh, enlightenments. Basically, 
the Linux needs to know uh, whether it's running in a TD or not. And if it's running a TD, it needs to take a different code pass. For that, uh, we encourage to use GHCI and it, we propose as a spec, uh, cover up, talk about more on the next page. So GHCI is a guest hypervisor communication interface and it covers the changes for booting because of uh, TDX support and TDX enlightenment the guest and then defines the API or services uh, from the VMM as an API. We have a working group, the JCI working group. Uh, it's, the goal here is that ensure the kernel, uh, Linux kernel, is being built into the single Linux TD binary that can boot and operate in a major operating system, or major BMMs today. And common interface in a GHCI and an implementation, consistent implementation across the VMM is the key to achieve the goal. Okay. Now we are almost there. This is uh, probably the final page. And I just want to recap what we presented so far today. This is a hardware. We have also firmware. Then firmware does M check, basically M check, and then load bootloader. Bootloader loads the same loader as a SCM. Then eventually BMM comes up and it can run the legacy VMs. And legacy VMs is a VM exit, VM enter. Now for TD, we need a TDX module and then um, uses new instruction, sim call, sim read. Then to create a TD, we need a private memory mapped by TDMR, protected by TDMR. And we need to create TD related data structures like SEPT or TDCS and also TD memory cell in the private memory. Okay. Now we can create more TDs or again those will be uh, the key data structure need to be in the private memory. And whenever the BMM needs operation against the TD related data structure, it needs to use the same call, uh, basically API. Okay. We also talk about the TDX GHCI guest uh, hypervisor communication API. Okay. And finally, uh, we didn't cover this one, but uh, we have uh, ISO leaves for attestation purposes. Thanks, John. So in summary, we are developing Intel TDX to scale confidential computing capabilities for the cloud. While we try to reduce developer friction um, due to recompile, refactoring, etc. And we really look forward to continue working with this community uh, and appreciate all the feedback that we've already started getting. Uh, the links at the bottom are the references to the documentation for Intel TDX, as well as the, the source trees for the KVM changes and the Linux guest changes that we're proposing. Thanks for listening again and talk to you soon, soon online.